Good morning, I'm Angelo Castro the third. I'm Angela and we are the Castros. Happy Friday everyone. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 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 one more day and uh, pahinga na oh, for most. Ha, kasi may mga oh. ibang tao may trabaho naman on a Saturday. And But since still, it's a Friday, we are joined by... Of course, uh, Buddha's Belly. Mm. Oh, meron tayo... Okay, game. Ano ba ito? Uh, dim sum platter. Ito, this one is a dim sum platter. Uh Oo, -oh, of course, you have Yang Chow Classic with egg. Yan, itong dalawa. O, oh, asado. Uh, sweet and sour spirits. Here. Uh, tsaka beef balls. And, and hakao. And, and my uh, favorite buchi. Ever favorite buchi. <laughs> thank you so much kay Marjorie. And uh, lahat ng mga viewers natin, thank you for joining us for the entire week. Uh, we have one more episode to go. Abangan niyo ako ang ano yung mga nasa top natin. Oo. Oh, oh. oh. Ang dami kasi mga pangyayari actually this whole week. Oh, yeah, Nag-up information overload na ako. Parang non-stop ang pagpasok ng mga balita oh, at oh. kwento. Diba? Tapos today pa yung 8th uh, anniversary ng uh, decision ng uh, permanent uh, ng the Hague ruling, the Hague ruling on the West Philippines uh, Sea arbitral in arbitral ruling natin yes oh. mamaya pag-usapan natin yan pero mamaya rin pag-uusapan natin yung designated survivor mm. the show <laughs> the show or yung sinabi ah, ni ano sinabi. sinabi ni Vice President okay. Sara Duterte ah, madaming pag-uusapan but we're serving you news in a countdown all that before your second cup of coffee this is brunch Let's begin our countdown with the country's new candidate for sainthood, Filipina catechist Lorena Franco, or more commonly known as Kaluring, could be the third Filipino saint. Pasig Bishop Milo Vergara says the Vatican cleared the way for an inquiry into the cause for sainthood of Kaluring. At least two miracles for those who prayed for the late catechist must be attributed to Kaluring. Kaluring served as at St. Michael Parish in Taguig City as a catechist before succumbing to ovarian cancer in 2011 at age 75. Wow! Madaming ano yan eh, uh, open the case for sainthood, tapos number of miracles, then... Na yun na nakikita, na may nakikita ang Vatican na on this, diba? So if ever na, let's say for example nga, medyo mahaba-haba nga yung uh, magiging proseso nito. Ito na possible causes, ba? Diba? Or you have St. Clair of Television, di ba? May naka-assigned na specific uh, 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 advocacies ng isang saint na ina-assign ng church. St. Francis, di ba, for animals? Animal, St. Oh. Francis of Assisi. Chinecheck yeah. ko nga ito si Kaloring. Chinecheck ko, sabi pala dito, siya yung, uh, uh, Franco was one of only two women in the entire Archdiocese of Manila mm. authorized to distribute Holy Communion. Mm. Oh, di ba? Kasi usually, di ba, lalaki yung uh, pinapag... Yeah. Distribute. Either the priest or yung kanyang mga... Ay, hindi ko siya naabutan. Ah, oh, she was born siya. 1936. Yeah, but 2011 daw, she yeah. died. So that means she was still active years before that, di ba? Anyway, right. uh, madami pa pag-uusapan. Let's move on with the countdown. Placing ninth in our countdown is the quest for the Olympic gold. Filipino boxers Nesty Petesho and Ira Villegas are currently under the guidance of Atlanta 1996 Olympian boxer Reynaldo Galido. The former Olympian shared his journey from the ring to coaching our bets for the Paris Olympics. From Mets France, Carlo Pamintuan with the report. The last time the Philippines was able to qualify five boxers to the Olympic Games was back in Atlanta, 1996. And now one of the teammates of silver medalist Mansueto Onyok Velasco is currently working with the squad as one of their coaches. So cute. Turkey. Uh, Reynaldo Galido competed in the light welterweight division in the 1996 Olympics. Unfortunately, he had a very early meeting with world number one and eventual silver medalist Octay Urkel of Germany that caused him to drop out of the tournament early. Actually, you know, I'm going to go to the next time because I'm going to go to the next time. She's going to go to the next time. We're going to go to the next time. We're going to go to the next time. Ang talagang laro eh, boxing eh. Hindi na talaga mo kung di sa'yo, hindi talaga sa'yo ang tukot. Alam mo na, nung kulang ka lang sa tukot, nung kulang sa pagbagbagad, nung kulang sa kilid eh. Nahuli mo na siya, pero kulang sa tukot na suntok. Galido would not get a chance to compete in the Olympics again, 
as he suffered a shoulder injury in the qualifiers to Sydney 2000. But he would find his way back into the quadrennial event as one of the Philippine boxing team's coaches. Well, sa akin, napakaswerte. Ano, napakasaya ako din dahil siyempre nung time, during my time, di ba kami nung nakapasok at siyempre time, yung plug bearer ngayon, sa atin din na boxing din. Nung time yan, ako rin ang plug bearer ng 1986 Olympic ngayon. Parang napifeel ko na rin na, na nakasama pa rin ako sa ganito. At least nandito, <laughs> parang kasama nga talaga ako. Right now, their squad is split into two groups and the assignment is to help out Nesty Petesho and Ira Villegas. Galido will always be proud of their 1996 squad that went home with an Olympic silver. But he knows that this current group could build on the most successful Olympic campaign of the country in the upcoming Paris Games. From Mets France, Carlo Pamindoan. Okay. Oo, oh, muli ang ating uh, pagbati and of course ang ating uh, pagdasal. Siyempre, mm. good luck dun sa ating luck, mga delegado dyan sa Paris Olympics. Hey, let's right? move on to the next. Some sad news uh, at the 8th spot. Rescuers are still looking for two elementary students swept away by rampaging floods that hit four Bangsamoro towns on Tuesday. Authorities identify the missing persons as siblings Sheila and Ella Abdullah. They were swept away by the flood water that destroyed their house in Balabagan, Lanao del Sur. Around 10,000 villagers in four Bangsamoro towns were affected by rampaging floods. Hundreds of semi-permanent houses and swaths of agricultural lands were destroyed due to recurring torrential rains. Local agencies are currently facilitating relief missions for the residents affected by the calamity. Dalawang bata yan ang magkapatid. Mm -hmm. Pero uh, habang busy yung mga government officials natin dito, sa pamumuliti ka dito sa Metro Manila, yan ang nangyayari ngayon sa BARMM, sa BARM. Uh, 10,000 villagers yung affected po dyan. At uh, yun nga, may dalawa pang hinahanap na bata dahil na naasama sila, naanod sila nung uh, flood parang water eh. Parang makakalungkot lang kasi sa dami ng issue na lumalabas ngayon. Yes. Na parang natatabunan yung, yung pangangilangan nila. This is very nila. important. This is very ano, important. Buti, it's, it's in our countdown. Yes. Natatabunan yung nangyayari sa kanila. Oh. But we have yung to remind yung mga tao dun sa SONA, 20 million pesos. O oh, ito yeah. nga, BARM. Diba? Natutulungan ba natin? Although, of course, yung mga regional office doon, oh, yung local naman. government nando doon, oh, ha? But they We're need not help also. setting that aside. But of course, they need help din sa diba? national Meron government. Meron ng daddy, hero, di ba yung hero oh, daddy oh, oh, na oh. liligtas yung bata pero mm -hmm. siya hindi na, ano, hindi na nag-survive. Mm -hmm. So, yan yung ano ko lang, yung point ko, di ba? So, patuloy tayong kukuha ng mga updates dyan and hopefully, sana nga makita na yung dalawang nawawala pa na yes. inanod nga ng baha. Okay. Alright, uh, uh, coming up. Vice President Sara Duterte appoints herself as the so-called designated survivor. And the lawyer of fugitive Apollo Kibuloy says his client may have flown out to China already. Yun, yan na sinasabi ko, ko kung totoo yan. <laughs> Diba? Oh. Init ng ulo. Ayan, nakatakas na. Ang bagal kasi kumilos. Mamaya, pag-usapan na yan. Hold your horses. Tama ba yun? Wala naman horse. There are snow pag horse. Pag-usapan natin yan because we are just getting started, mga kapatid. Hulaan niyo po kung ano yung magiging number one natin ngayon sa ating countdown. More of our top 10 news when brunch, re when brunch returns. Keep, Keep it here on One News. One news. Thank you for watching Brunch here on One News. Happy Friday po sa inyo. Napakarami natin pag-uusapan today. But of course, thank you muna 
sa Budas Bell. Kay Marjorie. Para po sa ating uh, uh, pagkain for okay, today. Kay Marjorie Tan. At ito Thank kasi you. nangako din ako, uh, babatiin ko lang ng happy birthday si uh, Tita Esther Silvestre Abaya. Oy, At happy birthday. At iba pang mga senior uh, fans natin, si Flosser Enrico, Flor Ibarra, Chining Articona, Rose Bonifacio, Rosie Tobias Early Bautista. Nakatuwa Ay, naman, salamat. may mga senior fans tayo. Oo. So mamaya magbabati pa tayo, pero syempre, uh, let's continue muna with our countdown. The Court of Appeal has ordered the freezing of the suspended Bamban Mayor's bank accounts and personal assets. This came after the Anti-Money Laundering Council or AMLAC filed a petition against Go and two other individuals allegedly involved in POGO activities. The freeze order covered 90 bank accounts in 14 financial institutions, several real estate properties and high-value personal properties including a helicopter. AMLAC said the freeze order aims to prevent the dissipation of assets while investigations and legal proceedings continue. Now, the tell us, oh, oh, so yan nga, no, lumabas yan kagabi itong uh, Court uh, of Appeals uh, decision na sinasabi nga nila na if you freeze assets. itong uh, assets ni uh, Mayor or suspended oh. Mayor oh. Uh, Alice uh, To prevent oh. uh, the dissipation of assets kasi yes. baka mag-liquidate siya or yun ang, yun ang sabi nila. Yun ha? sa AMLAC. Oh. Yun Pero sa AMLAC. if I'm not mistaken, uh, parang alam ko merong uh, basihan, although this is uh, parang pub, lalo na public official siya, dapat hmm. demand, may transparency etc. No? So, ito, linawin na lang natin. natin, sa, natin uh, to tell us more about this, we have attorney Stephen David on the line. Good ang, morning. Ang uh, lawyer po ni uh, suspended mayor Alice Go. Good morning, attorney. Thank you for joining us. Hi. Uh, good morning, uh, Boss Diego and uh, Ma'am Angela. Yes, uh, attorney. First and foremost, of course, we'd like to get your uh, reaction po yes. on the Court of Appeals decision on freezing the suspended mayor's assets po. Well, uh, ganun ginagawa naman talaga ng, uh, ng AMLA yan na mag-file sila ng mga court para nga yung asset press sa uh, mm. APO. So, uh, actually, uh, hindi naman kami na-surpreso dyan. Kaya lang, uh, eh, wala pa akong comment dyan. Ngayon ko lang umaga na laman na file na yan mm. sa court. So, in the absence uh, po, kung hindi po nyo na masyado nakita, no, uh, ano po ang plan nyo after this order? Siyempre, eh. Pagka nakita na yan, bubusisihin natin ng isa't isa, isa, isa yung mga properties na yan, mm -hmm. kung sa natin pa dapat talaga yan ng first order. Kasi baka naman hindi na sa kanya yan, di ba? Kasi yes, uh... kaga ang alam sa Senate, Senate hearing, kagaya ng elect after 2019 pa niya yung naibenta, yung ibang mga ari-ari, matagal na naibenta, eh, eh awawa naman yung mga bumili. Yes, so, mas uh... maganda, mas pabusisi natin yan. Mm -mm. Attorney, can you educate us po on the legality of this uh, court order uh, in terms of publishing this? Ayun lang talaga mali. Kasi una-una, ang AMLA is subject pa rin sa provision ng Data Privacy Act. Yung mga ganyan mga sensitive informations, hindi yan dapat dinidibald sa public. Kasi uh, masyadong ano yan, masyadong... Uh, controversial sa isang tao na alam ng buong mundo yung asset nila. Let's na yan eh. So kaya nga meron tayong batas. Mm -hmm. Kung kung man, ilalabas yan, dapat hindi sa public at dapat may guidelines siya ng Supreme, ng korte. Mm -hmm. May mga order. Hindi yung basta-basta mo nalang ilalabas siya. Anong purpose mo doon? Mm -hmm. Para saan yun? Pwede kang makasuhan doon mm -hmm. ng bridge ng press. I'm sorry, uh, attorney, nawala po kayo. Pwede pong kasuhan ng breach of? Pwede, breach of privacy. Mm, okay. Breach of the privacy act ng isang tao. Kung maglalabas ka ng mga sensitive information sa kanya under the data privacy act, pwede makasuhan criminal at civil. Mm -hmm. Kaya dapat, at yung mga kaibigan natin, sa pagdidibulge ng mga ganyang information, hindi po kaya public official ka, eh pwede mo lang ganyan. Kahit na government ka, kahit na private ka, uh, may limitation siya. Dapat sumunod tayo. Mm -hmm. So, lilawin ko lang po. No? So, even if it public official po, lalo nga po ito si uh, Mayor Bambanap, uh, government official po siya, uh, hindi po siya exempted po sa ganun. Uh, I mean, uh, para po sa, for transparency ng, uh, ito po, ng mga dokumento. Hindi exempted sa ganun kasi uh, may karapatan pa rin ka. Ikaw, kahit government official ka, may karapat na ka pa rin sa iyong private life. Hindi porke taga-gobyerno ka, pwede nang 
kalungkatin ng lahat ng tao yung assets mo. Paano kung kung may mag-isip sa'yo na hindi maganda? Kung, alimbawa, sabi mo lahat ng government officials, ay, eh, gusto kong makita yung ano nyo, yung assets nyo para ano. Kailangan merong legitimate purpose. Kailangan merong kang court order. Meron kang legal reason bakit mo ginagawa yun. Mm-hmm. Bilang government yeah, di ba dapat mm-hmm. may gano'n. Hindi yung basta mo na lang nananahimik yung tao tapos ipapublish mo sa headline news yung assets ng isang tao. Tsaka yan, hindi lang naman si mayor ang inaan nila. Pati yung mga private persons na na ko, ko uh, kasama yan, mm-hmm. di ba? So, uh, having said that, as a remedy nga po, sabi nyo kanina, uh, magpa-file po kayo ng motion once makita nyo na po itong uh, dokumento na ito. But uh, aside from that, what else? Uh, ano pa po ang mga dapat po ninyong gawin? Ano mga po susunod nyo pong hakbang? Well, siyempre, magkakaroon na sagutan sa Court of Appeals. Mm-hmm. Magkakahiri. Kaya harapin natin lahat yung mga uh, evidensya nila na binabato laban kay Mayor Addis. Mm-hmm. Uh, yan naman ang trabaho. Rules of, rule of law. Eh. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Taking this opportunity na rin po, uh, Attorney, no, to ask you regarding the, ito pong uh, supposedly, uh, itong Senate po, mag-order po ng uh, arrest uh, order kay uh, Bamban na Mayor Alice Go, dahil po sa hindi niya pag-asipot uh, po sa hearing. Well, uh, in-expect natin yan kasi mm-hmm. nga hindi mo sinunod meron silang ganyang uh, authority. Mm-hmm. So, although ako naman, as a lawyer, umakyat tayo sa Supreme Court para mm-hmm. nga so, yung uh, propriety o yung need niya, effectiveness niya na maging resource person. Kasi, Boss Diego, mm-hmm. ang mga hindi naman siya accused eh, di ba? Mm-hmm. Resource person. So, kaya siya nire-required magsalita. Yes. Ay, kita para magsalita. Ang problema, pinailan siya ng mga kaso. So, ano nga yan na pwede niya sabihin na hindi siya ma-incriminate? Mm-hmm. Eh, under the Constitution, protektado siya dapat ng uh, right against self-incrimination. Hindi na siya, kung ako yung Senate, hindi ko na siya i-require mag-appear kasi mm-hmm. hindi na siya effective. Yeah. Diba, Pero, yung oh, oh. Uh, right against self-incrimination, wala ka na makukuha sa kanya. Oh, oh. At Tony, paano po pag hindi, wala pa pong sagot ang uh, Korte Suprema doon po sa inyong... Uh, final na uh, TRO, if I'm not mistaken, dito po sa pag uh, uh, samon sa kanya ng Senate, tapos dumating na po yung araw ng hearing, uh, will you advise your uh, client to attend? Oo oh, naman, lagi ko naman siyang ina-advise na magsa, mag-abide uh, by the rule of law, no? Yung, uh, kaya lang, ang problema kasi yung emotional condition, eh, parang hindi niya kaya. Hindi ko ma- hindi masasaklap nararamdaman yung pakiramdam niya sa ito naman si may stress sa ganyan klase ng pinaharap di ba sino ang taong hindi may stress sa ganyan mm-hmm. all right oh, hindi uh... kasi gusto ko lang kamustahin din si ano bago natin napakawalan si attorney mm. kamustahin po namin si uh, uh, si uh, mayor go uh, uh, nakausa kailan niyo po siya huling nakausap two days ago nakausap kami pero traumatized siya eh. lagi nga siya umiiyak tsaka ma- ma- ano hindi, hindi talaga maganda yung physical condition niya dahil niya sa mga stress na nararap. Ipinagsisigawan ka ba naman sa Senate at uh, sinasiberbully ka, nilalibel ka, pastor ka, binubulat na ng private life mo. Sino naman tao ang hindi patutroma sa isa ganyan? Hmm. All right. Uh, with that, uh, thank you very much, uh, Attorney Stephen David, for joining us this morning on Brunch. Maraming salamat po. <laughs> thank you. Okay, boss. Yeah, go ahead. I'm on That was uh, Attorney David, Attorney the Stephen David. legal counsel of uh, Mayor, suspended Mayor uh, Alice Go. Oh, oh. Mm. So wala pa, wala pa sa kanyang kamay yung dokumento ng uh, desisyon ng Court of Appeals. But of course, uh, ano naman din eh, talaga ang dapat gawin nila, di ba? Mag-file ng motion, motion etc. Right. Okay, sige at uh, mahaba-haba pa tong Correct. usapin na to tungkol dito kay Alice Go. But of course, sabi nga natin, marami tayong dapat pag-usapan today. Let's continue with our countdown. Coming in at the sixth spot, the Justice Department orders to conduct autopsies on all dead inmates. The DOJ entered an agreement with University of the Philippines Manila and United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime that aims to conduct forensic examinations on custodial deaths. This is their way to strengthen procedures in investigating the deaths of inmates. 
Prior to this, autopsies were only conducted when family members suspect, suspect foul play as the cause of death of a prisoner. Oh, kasi if you can remember during the COVID-19 pandemic, yeah. uh, ang daming mga namatay and then kung hindi lang nag-question yung I think yung kaanak nung isang namatay doon ay uh, hindi ma autopsy yung mga yung yung uh, certain uh, PDL na yon. And there are issues about uh, accusing I think kay Bantag ba to? Oo. Oh, oh. oh, di ba? Yung oh. and may nagkwento na isang inmate na na nag uh, hindi nagpakilala. na sinasabi, sometimes some inmates die na nagmumukhang heart attack, pero hindi naman hindi daw naman heart pala, attack. Inano oh. nila, asphyxiation daw, nilalagyan ng bag sa ulo, hindi na makahinga, magsistop na lang yung heart. So, uh, I think uh, this is to uh, remedy the situation na puro haka-haka. Oh. So at least when somebody dies, na meron na tayo, may SOP, may finding na tayo, na ano ba talaga ang kinamatay. Oh. Kasi di, eh, maganda rin ito, kasi alam ko nasabi rin to ni Dr. Raquel uh, mm, Fortun, Fortun, yung ating kilalang uh, forensic doctor. Our diba? only. Our only. Oh, oh. Pero yun nga sinasabi rin niya, para din daw ma-check yung mga uh, prevent preventable deaths. No? Kasi nakita daw nila parang recently also na yung ibang mga namamatay, mostly namamatay due to tuberculosis. Eh alam naman natin nagkagamot na ang tuberculosis sometimes pero nakakahawa kasi, siya. Sometimes kasi walang symptoms or it can mimic a simple oh, cough. Eh. Oh. So ba diba? So maraming mga exposed doon, etc. So this is also one way to combat that. Yung mga preventable diseases. ba diba? Kung merong may namatay dito sa sa loob ng bilibid na to ng ganitong sakit, o oh, i-check nyo na lahat ng ano, ba diba? Pagamot eh, nyo na lahat ng na-expose. Oh, Sana i-check nila habang buhay. Matintayin pa nila mamatay. <laughs> Hindi kasi di ba may namatay. Tapos uh, nakita, oh, ano yung cause of death niya? So ngayon, mati-check na nila may... ngayon yung exposed. Magagamot Then, na. Sabi ko kasi it mimics a cough. Kung may cough, mm. kaya check nyo na kung may tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. Kasi that's the common sickness naman sa loob ng isang uh, yes. crowded facility. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. Alright, uh, let's next, continue. Next. Uh, today, nako, July 12 marks the 8th anniversary of the arbitral ruling which rejected China's territorial claim in the West Philippine Sea. But yesterday, China reaffirmed its objection to the ruling. According to a report, Beijing says the tribunal ignored China's position and ruled on sovereignty over the islands and reefs in violation of the basic principles and the spirit of prudence and self-discipline. On the same day, the armed forces of the Philippines confirmed the presence of China's carrier strike group in our waters. AFP spokesperson Francel Padilla says they are concerned over the deployment. According to the U.S. Naval Intelligence, this is the first time this year that the aircraft carrier has been spotted outside of the South China Sea. Eight years na ito ngayon pinag-uusapan natin kanina ng opening na, ng bilis. brunch. Eh. Eight years na pala yung since the decision nga ng permanent... Yes, because I think the decision came out close to... Af I, uh, clo before or after na proclaimed si President Duterte. Yes. It was right at that time, around oh, that time. Oh. So, this is the first time nga na somebody, di ba, a nation yeah. uh, has challenged China over its maritime And we succeeded. And we succeeded. And we gained a lot of praise from other countries oh, for doing that. International community. Yes. It's just that nag-die nag down yung, kumbaga, ang tawag doon yung climactic na yung panalo natin, eh, mm. di ba? Tapos biglang uh, lumubog dahil nga after nun, yun na yung uh, pagpasok naman ng Duterte administration. Yes, because And we all know naman what happened mm, during the China centric Duterte kasi yung policy. Not China centric, but uh, mas friendly. <laughs> mas friendly towards China yung mga policies ni PRRD, former President Rodrigo Duterte. So, madami nagsasabing mga analyst na yung uh, panalo natin sa Hague, yung arbitral ruling, hindi masyadong na-maximize mm -hmm. yung potential na sanang pwedeng gamitin in leveraging uh, negotiations with China. We could have used this to... Uh, develop alliances with other Western nations right away. Diba? Pero apparently kasi when PR PRRD came into power, madami siyang inaaway na Western countries. Mm -hmm. So maybe hindi natin na uh, maximize yun at that point. Oo. Oh, oh. So yun nga, reiterate ko lang yung sinasabi rin ng China na ito uh, kanilang policy no? mm. uh, as a government ay yung non-participation and non-acceptance of this ruling that they would never recognize 
this ruling ever. So, which is, yun naman din talang nararanasan ngayon. Nakita naman natin, diba, increasing of presence ng Chinese uh, Coast Guard or itong China carriers uh, over yeah. the West Philippine Sea or Philippine waters, rather. And uh, other uh, issues pa, hounding, diba, surrounding uh, our claim over the West Philippine Sea. Okay, let's move on to the next. Coming in hot at the fourth spot is at Davao City Police. Davao City Mayor Bastet Duterte questioned the Philippine National Police or PNP after the agency changed the city's police chief three times yesterday. Police Colonel Lito Patay only lasted as a Davao City Police Chief for about four hours before he was replaced by Colonel Sherwin Butil in the afternoon. However, Butil was also relieved from the post within the day. Police Colonel Hansel Marantan eventually took over his position. Davao City Mayor could not help but think this move is politically motivated. PNP denied this and insisted this is normal procedure. This is not really limited sa, sa Davao City. Medyo uh, siguro because of the some of uh, political issues, nakanahaluan po ng kulay po ito but we want to assure everyone na na this is uh, far uh, far to uh, away uh, far far from uh, far from reality yung nangyayari po na sinasabi nga dinudugtong po itong mga nangyayari po sa Davao because of uh, the current political uh, issues Nangyayari nga yan Normal nga na may mga no, reshuffling no, pero no, Nangyayari nga yan but not hours <laughs> apart and tatlong chief Tatlo. in a, in one day so i i have to agree with si Baste, mayor Baste Duterte parang ano nangyayari i am not saying it's politically motivated but i'm saying that there's a, there's something happening may wala bang anong tawag diyan due diligence eh, baka diba? may problema ba kayo in terms of morale sa loob ng Davao City Police the mere fact na nagpapalit kayo every hour ito final na to kasi ah. <laughs> diba historically naman napapalitan yan after weeks yes, or days yes. but anong nangyayari kasi may 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 candidates na vet na yan. Mm -hmm. And for sure, by the time na bago pa ma-appoint yung next, meron na yung succession list na possible. So, tinitignan na nila ano ang magiging issue dito, ano yung pros and cons of each candidate. Hindi ba nalang nakikita to? Ano ba ang lumitaw na information on the day kay Patay pa lang na-appoint? Oh. After Patay, si Butil. Ah, palitan natin si Butil na lang. Oy, Ay, mali pala. Mali pala. <laughs> not naman, in, Wala nga not that fast. Wala nga due diligence na eh, yung, yung sinasabi. But in fairness, si Colonel, I think Colonel Maranta, no? or si uh, Chief Maranta, he, may maganda naman siya ang record. Or Bill. Ay, sino ba? Ah, ito yung papalit. Sa Davao. Oh, yeah, yeah, sa maganda Davao. ang record naman niya. Uh, we all know him kasi he's been vocal in speaking out before on certain uh, yung mga crime issues nila. Ay, kaya nga na, ano eh, na hahaluan ng politika dahil itong si uh, for Lito Patay, oh. uh, for, for instance, Diba, siya yung uh, kinu-question. Sa batasan. Yung, sa, dahil siya yung head sa batasan. Yeah. Diba, over drug Hindi, delay. bakit din nila in-appoint ka agad si Marantan? Right away. But may Kaya dalawa pang nauna. Kaya due diligence ang ano dyan. Matitignan. <laughs> Pero kasi before, nagkaroon din ng issue. Talaga naman nangyayari yung mga reshuffling. Uh, and also yung pagtatalaga ng mga PNP chief. Naging yeah. issue din yan during the Duterte administration naman. Dahil uh, uh, talagang parang sinu sinusunod supposedly yeah. niya uh, former President Rodrigo Duterte yung seniority. Kasi before, di ba, kunyari, uh, may magre-retire na na PNP chief. Uh, in six months, Hindi na siya pwede kasi mag-retire na siya ng okay So, kukunin mo na lang yung mas okay. Yung But mas this ha, not, not naman three in a day. Uh, Pero ito, not three in a day. I, I mean, that, that I'm aware of, I yeah, can be wrong. Oh. But for context lang sa lahat ng viewers, before we move on, in one day po kasi, nakatatlong chief ang Davao City. Mm. We started off po with si Patay. Afterwards, he was uh, replaced and reappointed to a different position. Si Colonel Butil came and then si Colonel uh, Butil was removed after a couple of hours tapos si Colonel Marantan naman ang pumalit. Mm -hmm. So nagkaroon po tayo ng tatlo in three days and si, of course, Mayor Baste question this because alam naman natin may rift between the Duterte family and the Marcos family. Yes, tapos and, yung usapin pa na and, and, ne, para, ICC. Uh, uh, ha? Usapin pa na. ICC, ICC and parating na ang midterm election. And, they, and, oh. and the three Duterte said that they were supposed, not the three, but... BP Sara said the three Duterte would run for the Senate. Nako, marami ka uh, tayong uh, ano tawag din, huntahan. Marami tayong kuda tungkol dyan. Pero syempre, <laughs> let's ano? move kuda? on. Kuda? Uh, yeah. Mga talk. Kuda. No, don't understand. Maraming kuda. Ay, hindi, <laughs> English speaking siya. Pero ito na po, let's continue with our countdown. 
One of the five co-accused of Apollo Kibuloy has been arrested in Davao City. Meanwhile, authorities are verifying reports that the pastor has already flown out to China. Here's the report. Authorities have yet to locate Pastor Apollo Kibuloy, who is wanted for trafficking and child sexual abuse. In an interview, one of Kibuloy's legal counsel says the pastor could be in China already. But the lawyer could not confirm this. But the National Police believes that Kibuloy is still in the Philippines. As we speak po, naniniwala po tayo na there are indication at uh, may, nanandito pa naman po yung mga hinahanap natin. There is also a possibility na dumaan po siya sa backdoor pero lahat po yan ay biniverify pa po natin. Recall that former President Rodrigo Duterte said he knew where the pastor is hiding but he did not reveal where as it was a secret. According to his former spokesperson, Salvador Panelo, Duterte was just joking. But the PNP calls on the public to take Kibuloy's cases seriously. Mga ganito po na, na seryosong mga bagay po ay sana po ay hindi po natin ginagawang biro. Uh, wag po natin kalimutan na yung kabilang parte po na sumisigaw po ng hustisya, may mga batang allegedly, di umano, ay minulestya at uh, naging subject for trafficking. The police also defended the DILG's move to put up a 10 million peso reward for Kibuloy's arrest. We have to also remember this is not the first time a private citizen ay nag-offer po ng reward. Alam po natin, pag may, 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 may mga heinous crimes, uh, even yung mga families po ng victim na mga civilian po ay nag-offer po. Vice President Sara Duterte, who is a known friend of Kibuloy, agreed to this. So right man na siguro uh, sa ato ang gobyerno and sa DILG na uh, magpagawas o rewards uh, para sa mga wanted na mga tao pa ng mga uh, dunay warrant of arrest. President Marcos earlier called on Kibuloy to come out and face his charges. Okay, so itong nahuli si Pauline Canada. No? Canada uh, name niya? Oo, uh, Pauline right. Canada. And uh, she was arrested at uh, Barangay Buhangin, no? Emily Home Subdivision, yesterday at 2 p.m. Okay. So, ito yung isa sa mga co-accused niya. No? So, ano, uh, magkakaroon daw ng uh, uh, press conference this morning. Emo ko, baka ongoing na, hindi pa. Hindi ako sure, pakicheck nga natin kung ongoing na. Ito nga sila, Interior Secretary Benor Abalos and of course si uh, PNP Chief General Romel Maribel. Uh, A lot of leads are coming in also. Eh? We're about the... Uh, Apollo Kibuloy. Oh, so, they have to verify kasi sa dami, hindi, hindi mo alam kung ano yung prank dyan. Oh, ano yung, tas, ano yung, sinabi ng yung... lawyer niya, baka daw pumunta. Lawyer niya nagsabi? Eh, baka ang word. Word is baka. Pero PNP thinks otherwise. Mm -hmm. Pero may possibility kasi, may alam possibility mo naman. May possibility yun. May mga backdoor chan. Nasa Davao ka, uh, alam mo there's a backdoor through the southern corridor. Diba? Na pwede siyang umalis. Pero, Ever since na run, uh, nagkaroon ng mga issue kay warrant kay Kibuloy, the PNP was already watching him, supposedly watching him already. Right. Oo. Oh. Oh. Tapos, na, na, ano ko lang, idagdag ko lang yung mga nakikita ko sa social media. ba diba? Yung mga joke ng mga tao. Kasi nga, 10 million. Hmm. Uh, Nagme-message sila daw, supposedly kay uh, Kibuloy, sinasabi nila, from ano po ito, yung kunyari shipping company, uh, ano pong exact location nyo, may i-deliver lang po kong meron, parcel. Ma, may, meron isa pa, aside yung sinabi mo, yung anong grab daw, yung, yung french fries daw niya, malamig na. Uh, oh. Saan, Saan po kayo yung, exactly? Para maibigay yung refund daw. <laughs> oh, <laughs> may matataba po, utak ng mga Pilipino. Very Pero uh, this is a very serious uh, case. Ha? So, At sinabi natin. ni Colonel Jean, di ba, huwag dito biro-biro. Oh. Kasi uh, kasabi ni Attorney Sal Panelo, nagjo-joke lang si At Pangulong Duterte. Kasi may secret daw, alam so, niya kung nasaan. <laughs> it's so, ano, no, how ang bilis mag-shift ng balance of power. Noon kasi amo nila si Pangulong Duterte. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, You see, you see the spokesperson say, hindi to biro yung sinabi. Hindi to biro, oo. Pero when he was president, panay ang biro niya. Okay lang yan. Okay lang yan. Let's understand him. That's Visayan humor, di ba? Anyway, don't go away because we're not done yet. May dalawa pa tayo. Stay with us.
Welcome back. You're still watching Brunch here on One News. Good morning kay Gary Field, sa Pokemon Go, kay Vlad, kay Hinel, uh, sa lahat Ralph ng viewers. Domingo. Ralph Domingo. Sa lahat ng mga viewers na may nagko-comment sa atin. Maraming salamat. Si Alex Fentes, maraming salamat Uh-oh. sa mga sticker niya. Oo. Ito yung sticker niya. Ito yung sa YouTube si Oscar, si Mark Santiago, Ronald Max T, mm-hmm. uh, si Noel Calayan, at saka si Anig Villa, Gary Ko, yan ang mga ano natin dito naman sa face. Ah, sa YouTube. Alright. Okay, let's go. Coming in at the second spot, former presidential spokesperson Harry Roque defends himself amid allegations related to illegal pogo. In an interview with Radio Cinco, Roque denied any involvement in a raided pogo hub in Porac, Pampanga. Roque said he never served as a legal counsel to any Pogo company, including Lucky South 99. This is contrary to PagCorp's findings that Roque served as legal head of the Pogo hub. But Roque clarified that his client was Whirlwind Corporation, which he said was just a service provider to Lucky South 99. Pero ang Whirlwind po, hindi po siya Pogo operator. Siya po yung nagpapaupa. Doon sa Lucky Star, 19, Lucky South 99, na siyang uh, merong lisensya dati na Pogo, at si Ran, siya rin po ang service provider. Kaya lang doon nagka-mistake sabi ni uh, Attorney Harry Roque, it's just during the time na nagkaka-pleadings tsaka sa mga regarding yung ano, whirlwind, siya daw humaharap for whirlwind, so people mistook him also for Lucky representing South. Lucky South because... Okay. Yung pagharap ng mga whirlwind sa mga pleadings kasi was also for or on behalf a service provider for Lucky, ano, yung Lucky South ba? Yes, yeah, Lucky uh, South Lucky 99. South. Oh. But Pero, he was representing Whirlwind Corporation daw. And ang trabaho ng Whirlwind is not only real estate, but service provider to Lucky, Lucky South. Oo. Oh, oh. oh, oh. So he tagged nga yung ano, di ba, dun sa kanyang Facebook post. He tagged uh, uh, several entities several, uh, from Rappler, UNTV, and, and Tayo. Uh, One News. Uh, One News. Oh, uh, okay. He tagged us um, for saying that. But uh, in fairness naman sa One News, we just quoted lang naman whatever was been said by other agencies, di ba? So wala naman uh, assumptions. Oh. Eh, kasi during, di ba, naglabas ng uh, press, call, uh, press release ang PAGCOR saying na merong ex-government official facilitating license yes. ng Pogo. Tapos, uh, siyempre, doon sa mga interviews, ganun din. Ganun ang kinere. But apparently, when uh, Chairman Tenko ng PAGCOR came, uh, came out sa Senate hearing uh, the other day, if I'm not mistaken, ang pagkakasabi niya ay assisted at hindi naman nag-facilitate at nakiusap ng maayos. Hindi namilit. Oo, oo, oo. So, sana yung PAGCOR naman before they spoke like that. Huwag na huwag na kayo magsalita oh. until he came out. Kasi oh. ang daming naglalabasan na statement. Even that, hindi yan talaga yung sinasabi din ng ex-government uh, yeah. official. Pero we don't know yet. But ito, one thing is for sure, may tinex si, si uh, sanabi ni uh, uh, Atty. Harry Roque sa uh, Philippine yes. Star na siya po ay pupunta sa Senate hearing. Uh, yes. Yan sabi oh. niya, I will be there. Yan po ay siguro kung uh, siya ay uh, of... maimbitahan na formally, di ba? Maimbitahan yeah. ng Senate hearing dito nga sa usapin na. Kasi si Senator Rizon oh. Tiveros may clarificatory questions yes. because Paok said naman, they, they are definitely sure oh. na hindi lang daw whirlwind ang re-represent oh, oh, Sabi sila. ng Paok yun ha, hindi oh. po uh, kami nagsabi nun. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Irininaw <laughs> ko lang. Sabi, oh, 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 oh. So we're Pero, airing both sides, all sides, all the time. Tingnan natin kung kailan yung, yes, totoo yan. So tingnan natin kung kailan yung next Senate hearing, uh, dahil nga abangan natin si uh, Atty. Harry, Harry Roque. Harry Roque dyan, dun sa mga accusations sa kanya na siya daw ay uh, uh, lawyer din Nang, ng Lucky South, hindi lang ng uh, whirlwind. Yun ang sinasabi, yun ang sinasabi. ng Senate. Pero tignan natin, ba diba, sabi naman niya ay uh, he will be there. But uh, of course, uh, medyo cambio tayo ng konti sa usapin ng Pogo, Pogo. Dahil ito po, alamin natin ang ating magiging top story for today. Our top story for today is Vice President Sara Duterte. The Vice President said she will not attend the President's third State of the Nation address or SONA on July 22. She also appointed herself as a designated survivor. Here's the report. A designated survivor is a person chosen to ensure the continuity of the government if the President and other people in the presidential line of succession die. They are kept distant in an undisclosed secured area in events where top officials gather like State of the Union address. 
This concept was also popularized in the South Korean and American thriller series. This is what Vice President Sara Duterte appointed to herself in line with her announcement of skipping President Bongbong Marcos' State of the Nation address on July 22. I will not attend the sauna. I am appointing myself as the designated survivor. The House Secretary General has yet to receive an official confirmation of the Vice President's decision. As of now, wala pa kami na receive na formal confirmation. Until we receive that confirmation, no? We assume that she is still going. House Secretary General Reginald Velasco also believes the Vice President was just joking when she appointed herself as designated survivor. Alam mo yung pamilya ni BP, mapagbiru eh. So, ang tingin ko, biru lang yun eh. Because under our laws, wala or our constitution, the succession is already provided for in the constitution. So there is no such thing as designated survivor. House Speaker Martin Ramualda said the vice president has the right to skip the president's sauna. However, he insisted that government officials should show unity in events like this. Political analyst Richard Haydarian criticized VP Sarah's statement. He said her statement about being the designated survivor is not painting a good image of the country. Marami bang analysts or marami mga... Uh, you know, mga observers, they will see this as something else, as potentially veiled threat, as the determination of Nawa Duterte to constantly challenge the current administration or, or so confusion uh, and division. And in, in and overall, hindi ito maganda para sa Pilipinas. Naging mukhang telenovela yung politika natin. Yeah, we know naman yung mga protocols nila on yung Line succession. succession. Like, uh, all, all, also pag may event, diba, if you notice, that if the vice pre president and the vice president are attending the same event, uh, they don't uh, arrive at the same time, they don't leave at the same time, they leave at minutes apart. Uh, pag may biyahe sa aeroplano, uh, yung succession line, may separate flights. Mm -hmm. uh, yung executive secretary, senate president, diba, they have separate uh, flights that are hours apart also to ensure na if anything bad happens, at least meron remaining down the succession oh. line. Sa states kasi nagkaroon ng, 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 ng television show na Designated yes, Survivor. Yes, uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Sutherland. Yeah. It provides, kasi the show is telling a story how the government provides uh, in case po nagkaroon ng uh, something uh, bad were to happen where all of the uh, government, top government officials are together at sabay-sabay silang nawala may isang uh, survivor Takeover. appointed designated survivor usually daw uh, sabi nila ang designated survivor hindi niya alam siya yung designated but in the States, survivor but meron talaga yan meron silang designated survivor in the event the na nagkaroon na some unforeseen circumstance na all the top uh, officials in the same line of succession na wala oo oh, oh. meron isa Actually, uh, if, I, if you can remember, si uh, former Senator Ping Lacson has filed a bill designated regarding survivor. designated uh, survivor. Pero uh, sa ano sa Congress na ano yun eh, parang winidro ni uh, former Congresswoman na Presyo Sepolito uh, saying daw na baka daw kasi ma-misinterpret siya na alam naman daw niya na meron naman talagang ano, yung line of succession yeah. within our Constitution. Oh. So, yung ang natira na lang, of course, yung final na bill ni uh, former Senator uh, Panfilo Lacson pero hindi, hindi siya nag-flourish mm. nga at that time. So, she, he was calling at that time na sana mapasa mm. nga daw yun. Pero naiintindihan ko yung... Di ba, inevitable na... Um, naiintindihan ko kay Senator Ping Lacson kasi for some unforeseen circumstance, there are certain yeah, events natin like Sona natin or... Hindi natin masasabi. Hindi mo alam where all of them might be together uh, and something Kaya, will tuloy, happen. Nung sinabi ni, ano yan, ni uh, Ay, Vice President Sara Duterte, I, sabi mo. ng mga tao, is that a threat? No, it's not a threat. <laughs> it's a joke. I mean, I I, I understood the yeah, joke. In oh. fairness to the vice president, I understood the joke. And for sure, she watches it. Yeah. Oh. And number two, alam naman natin, you cannot appoint yourself a designated oh. survivor. Pero yun nga, nalilihis actually yung usapan dun sa hindi niya pagdating, dun sa pagsabi niya ng uh, designated survivor. I also understand uh, survivor. that. Yung hindi niya pag, uh, yung attend. pagsasabi niya na hindi niya pag uh. Uh, attend ng uh, third Because uh, designated sort, survivor siya. No, because ang, ang re reason yan, di ba, let's uh, look, look at it, ano, big, uh, bigger picture, di ba, bigger perspective. No, this will really, anong tawag dun, nail, uh, ano, nail on the coffin, parang ganun, or uh, put sa period in everything na talagang, ah. wala na talagang unity. Yeah, oh, na talagang yung, wala uh, na. Okay. 
In other words, kasi talagang by not attending for the first time the SONA. Oh. Oh. Well, historically naman, opposition, if the opposition vice president uh, is invited to SONA, lang. <laughs> hindi naman siya pupunta. Yung first malamang nandun siya kasi oh, introductory. Pero I understand naman, D.P. Sara, if she's not going because yeah, she's now, na. by resigning from the cabinet, mm, alam mo na. yun lang nga siguro na, yung joke na there's no turning back. Hindi ako pupunta kasi ako designated survivor. Oh, Di ba? Di parang di na, naman, nalilinis na. To, pero oh, yun nga, sinasabi nga ni uh, House Secretary General, yeah. Reginald Velasco, wala pa silang uh, formal uh, letter uh, from uh, the Office Septance of the Vice President. Oo, oh, oo. Oh. Uh, tungkol dito nga sa kanyang pag Pero, Pero siya na, na rin na nagsabi. May verbal confirmation oh, naman na hindi siya. niya siya pupunta. Kasi oh. I remember yung first sona noon, ano eh, naka-yellow pa. If I'm not yes. yung first sona ba yun? Oh, naka-yellow pa siya. Basta naka-yellow. Tapos yung nakasuot siya na ano, di ba, silang yeah. dalawa ni ni uh, First Lady na Kayel. But for context, siguro maganda yung mga viewers natin, they could uh, watch the designated survivor to understand <laughs> saan nang gagaling Sabi ko nila, ang joke. Sabi nga nila, dadami daw ngayon yung views oh, oh. sa streaming ng yung sa streaming, alam yes. mo natin kung sa sinistream yun, yung uh, series na yun. Saan nang gagaling yung joke ng Vice President? Oh. Oh, yun lang man yun, ikayo naman eh. Oh. Ma Sabi nga ni Senator Rapping Lacson, magandang soundbite yung ginawa ni ano, Ni, uh, itong itong age Duterte. ng social media, may nagsasalita o joke o hindi joke ang isa, nagde-trend. Parang si da, madaming dumalaw kay Rico yan kasi oh. may nagsalita. Ito si Vice President, designated survivor. Ala! <laughs> nag sa lahat. O oh, yan, si Netflix natutuwa. Oh, oh. Ayun, so, na. yan. Yan, uh, yan pa yung siguro next week pag-usapan na rin natin. I'm mga sure so mga nganak itong mga issues mga plus new issues uh, Sino kaya approaching the zona. Flavor of the month by July, ay by August. Kasi iba-iba yung nagiging flavor of the month. Napansin mo? Yeah. <laughs> Ngayong July si Rico yan. Nung May si uh, June, si Mayor Bamban. Iba-iba eh. <laughs> ay, nako. Anyway. Oh, pero uh, syempre tayo, tuloy-tuloy lang yung uh, pag-count. And thank you pala sa Buddha's Belly kay Marjorie for sending uh, itong mga pagkain. Kung walang bawas, huwag kayo mag-alala kasi after the show, doon namin uubusin. <laughs> And that's a lot of viewers natin. Thank you very much for joining us uh, on brunch today. Yeah. We will see each other again next week. Don't worry. May may ba ba? ba? Oh, si Gary Field ba na na ba? Na, yes, na bati ko na kanina. Okay na. Leo Abad. Yeah, oh. yung mga hindi natin na bata na bati kanina. Myra Silinta Limay. Si Jerry Yang was also Jerry watching. Yang, of course. Right now. Good morning, Jerry. Oh, oh, oh. And si I like Earth. and Mother Earth, of course, uh, and all our family members. Thank you for supporting us. And with that, I'd like to leave everyone with a quote uh, for the weekend. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. A quote by Henry Ford. Okay. Apparently, hindi Ang nangyari dito sa, ano, sa government natin, coming together lang. <laughs> Apparently, hindi nakinig ang unity team sa quote ni Henry Ford. Oh, hanggang dun lang sila sa first process, coming together. <laughs> and that wraps up today's episode of Brunch. Join us again on Monday. I'm Angela Lagunsad Castro. And he is Angelo Castro III. We are One News. Go all Go sides all the time. See you on Monday.